All right, we'll keep this short and sweet. Uh, this afternoon at 4 p.m., the Secretary General will meet with members of civil society and philanthropic organizations who will hand over a call to urge governments and corporations to take bold actions to safeguard the oceans at the next UN Ocean Conference that takes place in Lisbon from the 2nd to the 6th of June. Before that, at 1.15, there'll be a briefing here on the Oceans Conference. The speakers will include Ambassador Palau and the Ambassador of Denmark, along with Peter Thompson, the Secretary General Special Envoy for the Ocean, and Karen Sack, the Managing Director of Ocean Unite. Uh, back in the Security Council, Izumi Nakamitsu, the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, uh, briefed the Security Council in its open debate today on small arms and light weapons. And she said the destabilization, accumulation, illicit transfer, and misuse of small arms and light weapons continue to initiate, sustain, and exacerbate armed conflict and pervasive crime. On a global scale, she said small arms were used in nearly 50% of all violent deaths between 2010 and 2015. This translates to more than 200,000 deaths each year. She added that diversion remains a major source of weapons and their ammunition for gangs, criminal organizations, and terrorist groups. Ms. Nakamitsu added that the negative impact of illicit small arms and light weapons following flows in cross-cutting and multidimensional. Illicit arms and light weapons have a multitude of implications for security, human rights, sustainable development, gender equality, and conflict prevention. And her remarks are on the line. Um, and yesterday, you heard the Secretary General express his continued concern about the civilian population in northern Syria. And today, our colleagues tell us that the humanitarian conditions continue to deteriorate in the northwest of Syria as airstrikes and shelling continues to be reported. Some 586,000 people have been displaced since the 1st of December, with over 100,000 others facing an immediate risk of displacement. Many of those affected are living in particularly appalling humanitarian conditions, and most of the displaced are moving north and west away from the conflict in search of safety. Food, shelter, water, sanitation, hygiene, health, education, and protection assistance are all urgent priorities, as many of the displaced left with nothing more than the clothes on their back. The humanitarian community has released an emergency response plan to address the needs of up to 800,000 people in the northwest of Syria over a six-month period. The requirement of the plan is about $336 million. And turning to Libya, despite political uh, efforts and commitments, civilians continue to suffer the brunt of the fighting in and around Tripoli. Yesterday, two more children were killed in shelling on the residential neighborhood of al Karamiya in Tripoli. The medical teams trying to rescue those injured in the attacks were themselves affected by shelling near a local hospital. This is the third attack to impact health personnel and facilities this year. Two health workers have been killed, five others injured in such attacks since the beginning of the year. That's according to the World Health Organization. Around 749,000 people are estimated to be in areas impacted by clashes in and around the capital, Tripoli, including almost 345,000 people in frontline areas. Humanitarians continue to call on all parties to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure and to avoid the use of explosive weapons in populated areas. Where access and capacities allow, humanitarian partners continue to provide assistance to the internally displaced, to returnees, migrants, refugees, and other vulnerable and conflict-affected groups. The Libyan Humanitarian Needs uh, Overview for 2020 was published last week and estimates that 900,000 people in need of assistance in Libya. This is over 13% of Libya's population. And turn, in a press conference in Bangui, in the capital of the Central African Republic, um, the government and the UN peacekeeping mission have reaffirmed their commitments to the implementation of the peace agreement that was signed in February, uh, on February 6th. 2019, so just about a year ago, exactly a year ago tomorrow. The mission highlighted progress achieved in the past year, but also urged armed groups, some of whom are still committing violations and human rights abuses, to honor their commitments under the peace agreement. The UN reaffirmed its commitment to work with the guarantors, the African Union, the Economic Community of Central African States, the government, and other partners to implement the agreement and to protect civilian population. 
And an update on the coronavirus. The World Health Organization today launched the Strategic Preparedness and Response Plan to support countries to prevent, detect, and diagnose the transmission of the virus. WHO is requesting $675 million to fund the plan for the next three months. $60 million of that is to fund WHO's operations. The rest is for countries that are potentially, especially at risk. WHO has already released $9 million from its own contingency fund for emergencies. The organization is also sending half a million masks, 350,000 pairs of gloves, 40,000 respirators, and almost 18,000 isolation gowns from its warehouses in Dubai and Accra to 24 countries, with more countries to be added. It is also sending 250,000 tests to more than 70 reference laboratories globally to facilitate faster testing. The Director General of WHO stressed that the greatest concern is about the potential for spreading countries with weaker health systems and that WHO is asking countries for political, technical, and financial solidarity. And UNHCR said today that only 4.5 percent of the global resettlement needs were met last year. Out of 1.4 million refugees estimated to be in urgent need of resettlement worldwide, only about 64,000 were resettled through UNHCR. Most of them went to Canada, uh, the UK, Sweden, Germany, and the US. The agency says that while the numbers of resettlement achieved last year is in line with the targets, they worry that based on current projections, fewer refugees will be able to rebuild their lives in new countries. More information online. And you saw that yesterday after the press conference, we issued two senior personnel appointments, one for Selwyn Hart of Barbados as the Special Advisor and Assistant Secretary General for the Climate Action Team, and Mahmoud Moheldin of Egypt as the Special Envoy on financing the 2030 Agenda. Mr. Hart is currently the Executive Director of the, at, for the Caribbean region at the Inter-American Inter Development Bank. He was previously the Ambassador of um, Barbados to both the U.S. and the Organization of American States. And he also had worked here on climate uh, change under previous Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Mr. Moheldin, an economist, was the former Minister of Investment for Egypt from 2004 to 2010, and most recently served as the World Bank's Group Senior Vice President for the 2030 uh, Development Agenda, UN Relations and Partnerships. Um, I want to flag that on Monday, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock and the Food and Agricultural Organization's Director of Emergency, Dominique Bourgeon, will be here to brief you on the impact of the locust upsurge in the Greater Horn of Africa and elsewhere, and how the UN is responding and helping impacted governments. And uh, today we are thanking Slovakia for having paid its um, dues in full. And yesterday, we, if we'd had noon briefing, we would have thanked Bhutan, Morocco, and Samoa, which brings us up to very close to 40. Edie and then James. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, on the escalating situation in Idlib in northwest mm -hmm. Syria, has the Secretary General been in contact with the presidents of either um, Turkey, Russia, Syria, or uh, any I'm other not, senior officials? I'm, I'm not aware of any contacts between the Secretary Generals and heads of states. Contacts have been had at uh, other levels. Uh, from the UN uh, to those uh, to those member states. We also expect Mr. Pedersen and probably Mr. Lowcock to update the council tomorrow on the situation in northwest Syria. James and then Evelyn. Can I get an update on what's been going on in Geneva with regard to Libya? The five plus five talks have been underway. I think it's quite hard to read between the lines because there's not any much information coming out. We had yesterday morning, Mr. Salame said a few words, but We've had two days of talks. Has it gone into a third day? Have they gone beyond proximity talks? And what does it say about the situation if they're not even prepared to be in the same room? Uh, I'm afraid I don't have any updates from you. I've not gotten anything from, uh, from our colleagues in the mission, uh, the Libya uh, political mission. We will try to get something. Um, you know, it's one step at a time. 
uh, I think the fact that everybody went to Geneva is already a positive step forward, but uh, I mean, we're all realists, so we have to take it one step at a time. Sir, so, and then, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Just on the, uh, the WHO coronavirus um, response plan, 675 million over the next three months, how does that compare to previous plans and mobilizations to to outbreaks is this is this a lot of money comparably or have we I mean it's it, it, it's a lot of money by any uh, by by any measure uh, we you know it's hard to do uh, a compare and uh, and contrast I think the, the focus of WHO is really on those countries uh, where the health systems may be uh, not as robust uh, to try to get in front of uh, even larger spread of the virus as we see it. Uh, it's really about helping the resilience of health systems to deal with outbreaks, to deal with prevention, and also, as we said, to deal with, uh, with testing, because that's obviously a critical part of it. Evelyn and then Alan. Thank you. In Idlib, is it possible to trace the increase in violence to the withdrawal of U.S. troops and its deal with Turkey? Uh, that's an analysis question. Uh, what we're seeing is an increase in violence, and what we're seeing is an increase in suffering uh, to uh, the, the civilian population. What is clear is that there is a direct correlation between an increase in fighting, an increase in violence, and an increase in suffering. Alan. Thank you, Stefan. As far as we know, tomorrow, uh, United States President said uh, Jared Kushner is going to meet with Security Council. Is he going to hold the meeting with ESG? I haven't seen anything on the ESG schedule uh, to that effect. But obviously, tomorrow is another day, as we say. All right, demain est une autre journée, and demain I am not here. Uh, Fahan will be, you'll be in Fahan's hands until.